I'm gonna show you how I make ginataang kalabasa. Okay, so what's ginataang kalabasa? So you got the kalabasa, which is kabocha squash, and you've got your gata, which is coconut milk. It's hearty, it's quick, let's get started. Now I'm sure you can make this with other types of squash, but my favorite is kabocha. Like when butternut squash was a thing, I was like, uh, kabocha squash is so much better. If you haven't yet, you know, cut this in half and then clean out the seeds on the inside. I take a big knife, like the biggest knife that I have. If you don't have a big knife, then just use a normal knife and then like take a hammer. Yes. I wanna cut it a little bit like not too fat, so it'll cook faster. Oh my God. Okay, so just cut it into chunks like that. The smaller it is, the faster it'll cook. How fast do you need this cooked? Really up to you. So just put this aside. So next, we'll deal with the aromatics. We're gonna take uh, three garlic cloves. I'm just gonna smash it open. This is the fastest way to separate it from the skin, in my opinion. Mince this up. Let's take probably like half of this onion and just chop it up. Like I said, don't overthink it. You can even just throw it in the pot like this. And I'm gonna use this as kind of like a shallower pot. And um, really just choose one that'll fit all the ingredients. And then we're gonna put in some avocado oil. That's probably like half a tablespoon. We'll just let the oil heat up a little bit and then we're gonna throw in the garlic and the onions to just let it saute. Oh, that's the best part. Okay, so that should be hot enough. Let's just throw this all in there. So we'll sweat these guys a bit until the onions are translucent. So next, let's throw in the calabaza. Ooh. And then the star ingredient. This is about two and a half cups of coconut cream. And I'm gonna pour it all in here. Yeah. Ooh, that's a good amount. So I was gonna pour in just enough to at least cover all of the calabaza. So if you want, you can actually water this down if you want it to be less thick but there's probably gonna be some moisture coming out from the calabaza, there's gonna be some moisture coming out of the uh, French green beans that we're gonna add in here later. So you probably don't need it, but you can always add it later. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna just cover this and let it simmer for, maybe it'll only take like 10 minutes until you prick the kabocha with a fork and it's starting to get soft, not fully soft, but your, your fork starts to kind of go through. So here I have some French green beans. They're called Harry. Okay, if you read the package, it says Haricots Verts, but I know that's not how you say it in French. But these are French green beans. They're skinnier versions of green beans. Normally we put in Chinese green beans here, which are skinny and super long. Hence why I decided to use the French green beans. Eyeball how much of these green beans you want in relation to the kabocha squash that you have in there. Yes. That's good enough. And also we have some spinach, which is the very last thing we're gonna add because it basically just cooks in hot liquid. The shrimp we're gonna add in with the green beans because shrimp cooks really fast. Oh my God, okay. It's like, it leaked a little bit, but I am, that's okay. Let's, ooh, okay, that's actually really nice and soft. I really wish I had the Chinese green beans because they're crunchier when you put them in here. They're really good. Let's put in the shrimp. So these are peeled shrimps. And be gentle while you're mixing because the kabocha squash gets pretty soft. And before you know it, you're gonna get like a kabocha squash soup if you stir too hard. All right, so now I'm gonna add in some seasonings. Just grind some pepper on top, just eyeball it. This is what makes it taste so good. This is ginisang pagoong, which is sauteed shrimp paste. Eyeball it depending on how salty you want this to be. Dollop, what's this, a tablespoon, maybe? Yeah, the shrimp paste really makes a huge difference. Try using salt with this. 
it's not going to taste as good. To hit that umami in this dish, you're going to need the shrimp paste. If you think it's weird, I encourage you just try it. Trust me, it'll make a huge difference in your dishes. You'll love it. All right, so we're just gonna let this simmer for like three to five minutes on very low heat because as you can see, the shrimp is already starting to cook and you do not wanna overcook it. All right, I think this should be ready. Turn off the flame. Last but not least, we're gonna add the spinach. But I also encourage you to add as much vegetables as you can in this dish. It's a great way to get your veggies in. Put the spinach underneath with a hot liquid and it'll start to wilt. So this is traditionally eaten with rice. It is a Filipino dish um, and I love eating with rice or if you want, you can offer a grain like quinoa. You can eat it with quinoa. Mm, and can you see the sauce has kind of turned a little bit orange because of the kabocha squash. See, and then the shrimp paste in there. Woo! All right, let's spoon some into this bowl here. Look at that, it's so beautiful. Wow. Mmm, <gasps> this smells so good. Okay, I'm gonna try a little bit. Let's take some spinach, a little bit of kabocha squash. Mmm. I put the perfect amount of shrimp paste in there. It should only take you maybe like 20 to 30 minutes to make this dish. Thanks again for watching. Please subscribe, leave a thumbs up, leave a comment, say how much you loved it, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!